Alright, I thought I'd do a video on one of my favorite pieces of gear. Actually, a good friend of mine, my little dog. As you can see, he's a Doberman. He's about five years old now. Story on this guy, you see, my, he's my first uh, real uh, pedigree dog. Full breed. I've always gone with rescue dogs and dogs from shelters. But I had a good friend here in Tucson who's a, do who's a Doberman breeder and a few years ago he had the opportunity to get in on a European uh, show winner who had been coming across on a stud tour breeding throughout the United States and he had a there's a there's one disease that runs through Dobermans and a good Doberman or you know a, a valuable Doberman is going to be clear of that disease and if you breed a male and a female that are both clear you get offspring that are clear and you, you, the disease you know goes away so um, both the male and the female are clear as I said the male is uh, a show winner it's kinda cool uh, definitely an impressive lineage uh, this guy is full pedigree so he's still got his nuts and at some point we may breed him um, it's hard to tell in this video because he's just laying here being lazy but but he does have a bigger chest than a US bred Doberman we tend to breed them a little smaller than they do in Europe. Uh, some neat things about the Doberman. I really like them. When I was a kid, uh, some of my best friends had Dobermans, and so I kind of grew up with them without actually owning them. But I knew what a great breed they were and how good they are. Oh, he's getting a big head now. Okay, so uh, some of the neat things about them, though. They are definitely protective. Um, they'll you know, form a relationship with their people and just don't want to get between the Doberman and their people. But uh, aside from that, they couldn't be nicer dogs. Uh, this dog has a cousin who's basically the same size and lives with a, a three-year-old and a four-year-old. And, you know, great family. They uh, have a lot of fun playing with the dog. Um, they're very gentle, again, unless you piss them off and then they have quite a bit of teeth under there. So uh, some of the neat things about the breed. They come in a couple of different colors. I like the black and tan, like this guy. Um, none of his brothers or sisters were the red, but they also have a red uh, color, and then there's some others. Uh, they kind of sit like this all the time. Another interesting uh, little feature like this is their uh, nails. You never have to trim them. They just sort of grow nice. And I'm not used to that coming from... Uh, you know, cheap dogs. I'm not used to dogs that are that look nice just because they're bred to look nice. So anyway, he's a good dog. Their ears get cut when they're fairly young. Um, we cut this dog's ears when he was about four to six months, I think. And we took him up to a place in Phoenix, and they cut him with a laser. And he's actually sitting in sort of the pose he was when he was a baby, and they put him out. I'll try to put him in that pose, and then I'll get that picture of when he was a baby and put him next to each other. So. Uh, they basically stick him with some drugs and he passes out and then once he's passed out they take a really high intensity laser and they cut the ear and usually they're going to be cut in a couple of different shapes this guy is sort of in the middle between a military cut which is going to be a little shorter like this and then a show cut which would be this except much longer think of a great dane or usually cut with show cuts so uh... He's not going to be a working dog, he's too lazy, and he's not going to be a show dog, because he's too ugly. So, uh, went with the medium cut. I, I just prefer him that way. I like him to look a little aggressive, but not look like, uh, you know, some, like a Terminator machine or something. So, uh, like I mentioned, their tails get cut when they're babies. It actually happens when they're just born, and they're usually cut at the second or third, uh, what, bone in the tail, or vertebrae, or whatever that would be called. And uh, this guy was cut at his second, and it's kind of hard to see when he's just sitting here, but uh, when he's standing around and his tail goes up, it looks like he's got a little stub of a tail. But when they have it cut at the third bone, I think it looks a little weird. And sometimes they do that for show, but it makes their tail look a little long for my personal tastes. Uh, but that's not something you normally have any say about. That's something that the kennel will do. When you do the ears, if you go to a good veterinarian that'll uh, listen to you, then you can tell them how you want the ears cut. Uh, a lot of people don't cut the ears, and then they sort of look like a hound dog. Yeah, if you don't cut their tail, it just turns into a long tail like a hound dog. And uh, they kind of look like a skinny black lab at that point. And I'm definitely a fan of 
cutting the tail and cutting the ears. In Europe, I guess they're not even allowed to cut ears anymore or something, I heard. So, you know, keep your laws off my dog. Anyway, this dog couldn't be happier. He did go through a little bit of annoyance when they cut him. Not any pain or anything. It's just that when they t once you're, they're cut, that we have to tape them for a while so that they stand erect. And, you know, of course, then they want to itch them and the other dogs want to... It's an easy thing to bite, so they have games about who can rip each other's tape off of their ears. But that only lasts for a couple of months, and the rest of the time you just have a dog with some nice-looking ears. They're definitely smart dogs. I did clicker training with this one, uh, so I didn't do anything fancy. I just went to the box store and bought a clicker and started... Uh, you click it, and you give them a piece of food. You click it, you give them a piece of food. You click it, you give them a piece of food. And eventually they learn that that clicking is, you know, the same thing as getting a piece of food. So they start learning real well. I got this dog to learn just about as many tricks as I could come up with. Unfortunately, I think like anything, if you don't keep them practiced, they just get out of it. So he can do the tricks now. He just can't do them as quickly and as sharply as he could when he was a pup. And that's not his fault at all. I'm sure he could still do it. I just don't practice with him enough. It's not, it was kind of a novelty when he was a puppy. And it was neat to see how, how fast he could learn new tricks. And how many tricks he could keep in his sort of book of tricks. Compared to my other dogs. But, uh, you know, unless you're going to do it for a living or something. It's, it's just, you know, it's just too much to keep his whole catalog of tri tricks up. That said, this dog can still do all your... Your typical tricks, although I think it's kind of lame to make dogs do tricks for people. Um, so I don't, you know, bring them out at parties and make them do tricks or anything. Anyway, so uh, I like to keep a spike collar on him because it's cool. And he likes to roll that way. He also has a couple of other collars that you'll see in his EDC video. Um, this dog does have his own website. Uh, once I uh, got my own Doberman, I started doing some research and... I have always liked the breed, and now I like them even more. You know, we used them in Iwo Jima, the Marines used them, and uh, they're just a really interesting breed as far as their history and stuff goes. So, that's my, uh, my everyday carry dog. I think he wants down already. Good boy.